everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Dana and today is a first in what I hope to become a series so let me explain kind of what I'm thinking here I remember when I first learned how to crochet and I remember making my very first granny square and I was so so excited about finally making something making a granny square making anything and I made another one and I made another one and I made another one and so on and so forth. And then I am sitting here with all these granny squares and nothing to do with them. Hence where the name, so you learned how to make a granny square, now what comes into play. So my idea for this series is showing you how to make fairly simple, quick, easy projects with granny squares. Also, let me preface this by saying these videos are not limited to just beginners. I know sometimes it's just nice and easy to have a quick, simple project that is kind of mindless, you don't have to think about, and it's just easier to make. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into what we will be making today. Today with you guys, I wanna be making these cutie little granny square bags. They are indeed lined, and it's a fairly simple, quick, and easy project that I thought would be a great place to start for this series. Do let me know if y'all end up enjoying this video because I have many granny square projects that I would love to share with you guys. So let's get started. For this project, you will need as many as seven or as low as just one color of acrylic or cotton yarn. The choice is completely up to you. My preference is always for acrylic, this this big twist value yarn. I just think you can't go wrong with it. It's so soft for an acrylic and it's quite cheap at Joanne. So I always like to go with big twist when I'm working with acrylic, which is what I will personally be using today. But like I said, acrylic, cotton, the choice is completely up to you. And then any hook size you desire to match your yarn. This granny square bag is made up of just two granny squares that are seven rows each and then of course the bag strap. I will also be showing you how to sew a liner into your bag if you wish to do so. So you will need a piece of fabric that folded in half is a little bit larger than the size of your bag. Also a sewing machine would be helpful but you are more than welcome to hand stitch if you are skilled enough or don't have a sewing machine. In this video, we'll be using a sewing machine, but I'll show you all the steps so if you are hand sewing, you'll be able to follow along quite easily. So if you've already mastered making a granny square, go ahead and make two that are seven rows each and skip to this time in the video where we will start making the bag strap and I will meet you over there. Otherwise, for everyone else, stay right here because we are about to start our granny square from scratch and I will show you how to build it up to the seven rows that you will need for this. Okay friends, so we are going to start our granny square. I haven't the slightest clue where I want these colors to go, but I'm gonna go with the flow and see what I come up with. I have four colors here, so we'll just see what we get up to. I'm assuming if you're watching this portion, it is because you're probably a beginner, so I'm gonna show you how to start off. First, need to start with a slip knot. So if you don't know how to make a slip knot, place two fingers out, Put the piece of yarn over your fingers with the yarn tail facing down. You're gonna hold it in place, wrap completely around like that. Hold it with your pinky or your ring finger, whichever, and then go ahead and go under that first strand of yarn with your hook. Grab this little piece, pull it through, pull it through, keep pulling and there you go, you have a slip knot created on your hook, okay? So, now we need to chain up four. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. And then we are going to slip stitch into our very first chain here. So slip stitch into there. we go chain one and now we have this little center hole here and we're gonna work our first round all into that hole okay so now we need to chain up two more so we have three chains total on our hook and we're going to create a double crochet into that hole if you don't know how to create a double crochet yarn over 
insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just two. Okay, so you have two left, yarn over, pull through two again. So you're gonna complete two of those. So you'll have your chains, and then you'll have two double crochet. Then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and this is going to establish our very first corner. So now, still working into that hole we have, we're going to make three double crochet. All right, so again, yarn over, insert into that hole, pull a loop up, yarn over, pull through just two, yarn over, pull through two again. There we go. And we're going to make three of these double crochets. And now we have our very first corner established of our granny square there. Perfect. So now we need to chain up two again because it is a square, we need four corners. And again, surely you're getting the hang of it here. We're gonna do three more double crochets. Chain up two again. This is our third corner now. And three more double crochet into that circle. And, and this is our last round of double crochet clusters. All right, so we should have this. Chain two. And now we are going to insert into the top of our chain three space where we very first started. Insert into there and we're going to slip stitch. So just pull the yarn through and chain one. And now we have the very first part of our granny square. So you can decide now if you want to continue with this color, then do not cut off and change colors. You're just gonna chain up from here. So just give me one second to explain that. But if you're changing color, cut it now and pull through. So now that round is fastened on like that. And we are going to grab our next color we're gonna be working with. And if you are not going to be changing color, this is how you're going to start around. We've just done our slip stitch into our chain three and then we're gonna chain up one, two, three. This is our first double crochet still, but when we need to work our other two, we need to work them back in this corner chain space here, right back here. We need to work them into there. So you'll just kind of have to backtrack your stitches just, just a tad. And then that's how you, you know, you start your, your next round if you are not changing color. To add a new color, I like to attach my new colors all in this same area so my ends are easy to tie together and then weave in at the end, but you can actually just attach your new color to any corner you desire, completely up to you. In this chain two space is where you're going to wanna to be attaching your new yarn. So you're gonna insert your hook through first, no yarn on the hook yet. Create a slip knot with your new color. Pull it through your, your chain two space. Throw that tail to the side, we don't need that. And then we're going to chain up three. One, two, three. Now we are going to be working round two of our granny square. So we're just going to keep up with our double crochet. That chain three is always our first double crochet in the row. So every space has three double crochets in it. So we always only need to make two double crochet when we've chained up three because that counts as our third double crochet. So we have three now, three double crochet in this little area and this is half of a corner. So you'll understand when we get back over here, we'll complete our corner. So now we're going to skip all three of these cluster stitches here and we're just going to create our double crochets right into this next corner. So one double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet. 
All right, perfect. Chain up two. And let's go again. In that same chain two space, that same corner space, we're working three more double crochets after we chained up two. Because this is establishing a new corner of this round. So you'll see it there after we get done. And then yarn over because we're going directly into this stitch after our clusters and we're creating three more double crochets in this chain space. Three double crochet there. We're chaining up two and we are working three more double crochet in that same corner space. And now we're on to our next. Skip our three and let's start working directly over here into this space. This pattern will get very repetitive, which is great. And we're always just increasing the size of our square. So our corner spaces are always going to be a chain two. And then we're just going to do double crochet clusters of three, always in between those chain two spaces. All right, so now we are at our last little corner here where we very first started. This was the first half of our corner. We just completed the second half and we need to chain up two, one, two. And then again into the top of our chain three space. Sometimes it's hard to get your hook through. We are going to slip stitch. I am going to chain one because I'm gonna change my color, otherwise chain three if you're using the same color. But I'm changing, so I'm chaining one just to secure it so I can fasten off. Pulling it through, tie it down, and I'm on to my next color. All right, remember when we're changing color, we are going through our chain two space with nothing on our hook. We are creating a slip knot onto our new yarn, throwing our tail out of the way. We want to be making sure we're working with our yarn coming from the skein, not the end tail. I have done that as well. So just be cautious, pull it through, chain up three, one, two, three. And now for this round, we have a new center space we're going to be working in. So that's exciting. So go ahead and make your first half of your corner. We're just making our two double crochet because if we remember our chain three was our first double crochet. And now we're gonna work right into this space here between our two corners. This space right here, that's where we are gonna work our next set of double crochets. So we're working three of them. Ta-da! And now we are over here and we're working three double crochet again. Now, this is the first half of our corner. So we need to chain up two and complete our corner, which means we are working in that, in that same chain two space. We're not moving on yet. We have our first little corner established, we love. And now we are, again, working in this space here. Three more double crochet in there. New corner space. Chain two, corner again. Now 
now. Working in that center space one more time, or excuse me, two more times we have to work the center space. We worked our center, let's work our next corner. Chain two. Completing our corner. Last space here. We're gonna do one more round together, and then I'm gonna set you free like a bird. And I have all the faith that you are going to make a beautiful granny square. Last corner's completed. Chaining two, slip stitching into the top of our chain three, chain one if you're changing color otherwise chain three pulling it through and we're gonna work our next color so with our next color I'm gonna start here in my chain space again chaining up three and then we're just going to do exactly what we did in the last round except for we have more gaps this time so we're gonna work a double crochet cluster of three here and here, and then we'll create our corner in this space here. And then again, a double crochet cluster here, a double crochet cluster here, making our corner. And we're just gonna keep doing that. So let's, let's work it together. We are starting in our corner, making a slip knot, pulling it through, chaining up three, our first double crochet there, creating two more in that chain two space. And then working in our first gap here. A double crochet cluster of three. Working again, another double crochet cluster of three. Sorry if the white yarn is really hard to see on. I didn't think that one through, I guess. <laughs> and we're making the corner. Every round, you're just going to get a couple more spaces in between your corners. You're just going to continue to work them exactly the same as we have been. It's just that the square is getting bigger. Also, you're going to see a lot of people probably do granny squares a little bit differently. I personally do not chain in between a lot of people will chain one in between their their clusters here um i don't like to chain one only chaining in the chaining two in the corner instead of chaining between the reason i do not chain in between is because i feel it gives a much cleaner tidier look to the granny square so I like to just keep my chaining exclusive to my corners so remember these spaces here is where we're working And going to work our last 
two clusters and finish off our corner where we started. Also, if you are confused on what row you are on, because I did mention we want a granny square round of seven. So if you get confused about what row, I will show you. It's very easy to figure out. Hold on. Chain up two, slip stitch, voila. And I'm changing color again, so I'm fastening off. It's very simple to count your rows. All you have to do is count by color in this scenario. So round one is my yellow, round two is orange, three is pink, four is white, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. So that is a really simple way to count your rows. In your next round, you will be working a corner in your corner space in your chain two space as always and then the only thing that will change is now you have one two three clusters you're going to make in between these three holes here you're going to do those and then do your corner and repeat one two three double crochet clusters corner all the way around Keep expanding that until you get to seven rows and I will meet you back after we have made two squares of seven rows each. All right guys, I'm gonna start my last round of my granny square. Also, I did take the white out and I did an orange round instead. Hee <laughs> hee. I just hated the way the white was looking. It, it wasn't making sense to me. I always like to have my last two rounds, so round, round six and round seven, I like them to be the same color. I like the border it adds to the bag that way. So I do typically do round six and seven in the same color that I want the border color to be in. All right guys, how did it go? Hopefully pretty good, hopefully not too difficult. So we now have both squares completed. What I'm gonna do now quickly before we start our next process is just flip my square over and weave in all these ends. Luckily though, since I am going to be sewing a liner into my bag, I don't have to go overboard weaving them in. Then we are going to connect our granny squares together and move on to our next portion. If you're uncertain how to weave in ends for a project, I typically will face my project so the wrong side is facing me. So you can see I really poorly wove those in. I really just kind of tied them off. But again, like I said, there will be a liner and so I do not care. But basically you attach your yarn to a darning needle and then you can go ahead and you just kind of push it through some of the yarn here. And nothing about this has to be perfect. There's no method to weaving in ends on a project. It's very much just a little here, a little there, just so it's not going to come undone. And then I'm just gonna snip it up the base and voila, it's all done there. So now we have both of our squares and we need to connect them together. Take one square, and face it so the, the wrong side is facing up towards you, the right side is facing your table or away from you. And then you're just going to place your other square directly on top like that. And then we're going to need to work in the top left corner and we'll work down and around that way tilt it so you have like a diamond shape now almost and you're gonna attach your yarn up here go through that chain two space that we've made like always and then make sure you also go through the back one as well that chain two space there so now you're through both squares like that and you're gonna attach your yarn over here slip knot there like we have been and go ahead pull it through both and then let's just join it onto there. So I'm just going to join it there. And now we can begin our single crochets. We wanna make sure we're going through both these front two loops and 
the back two loops here out at the same exact time. There we go, we're, we're through the front two and the same two on the other square go through those. So we should have both squares on our hook and we can pull the yarn all the way through both and then just complete a regular single crochet. And again, through both loops on the front square, through both loops on the back square, pulling the yarn all the way through to the top, single crochet. One last time, through the front square, through the back square, all the way up, yarn over single crochet. We're going to repeat this all the way down our square until we get to our very first corner space. We'll do something a little bit different in the corner, but go ahead and work all the way down your granny square here. The most important thing again is just making sure that you are working through both squares. So we've worked all the way down. This square is attached on this side now completely, which is great, exactly what we wanted. And we are in our chain two space over here at the corner. And so for that, we are going to work one, two single crochets in there. And then we're just going to keep on working through both front and back loops. You will come across those places where we fastened off. Just continue that like a normal stitch and work this all the way down to your other corner. And we're gonna repeat the same process in that chain two space. All right, we are in our next corner here now, that chain two space. Remember, we're going straight through the chain two and we're just making two double crochets and then we're gonna start our last side here. If you're ever working up or down a side and you're unsure why your squares maybe aren't matching up perfectly or something, it's very easy to check to make sure your stitch placement is correct by just looking, okay, here I'm on my last double crochet in this cluster and I just move this and make sure that my next stitch I'm working is indeed also the last stitch on that cluster. So that's how I make sure I'm even and everything is where it should be. All my stitches are in the right spot and that'll just ensure that when you get to the end, you know, you don't have one side of the bag that is sitting higher than the other. All right, last stitch there. And then I do in this, in this chain two space at the top, I like to work one more through the middle of that there. Okay, perfect. Go ahead, chain one, and we're gonna fasten off. Pull through. And now our bag is entirely attached at all sides. There's no holes, which is perfect and exactly what we wanted. So now we're gonna start the strap. Uh, we are gonna put the strap on here before we do the lining. I do that because of the stitches my sewing machine puts into my project. It's really hard for me to, to sew the strap onto the bag once I've sewn already. I hope that makes sense. So I just attach the strap first. It's just a lot easier for me to weave through these sides and then I do the lining absolutely last. So let's go ahead and start our bag strap. I'll work with the pink really quick just to show you this portion of the bag. If you choose, you can use the exact same hook size you were using. I like to size up for my strap just because I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna make my strap with a 6.5 millimeter hook. But again, if you are using the same hook, it absolutely doesn't matter. So for this, we are going to be doing a Romanian cord. I love using a Romanian cord because it's sturdy. It doesn't have any stretch. Once you initially stretch it out and get those stitches tightened, it doesn't stretch after that. It's a very sturdy strap and I love the way it looks. Here's what it's gonna look like when we're done with it. So again, it does look, it looks super nice. It works up super quick. I'm gonna make mine to measure 41 inches long. You can measure on yourself 
how long you would like it. I just find 41 inches seems to work really well for me. If a Romanian cord is too tricky, another great option for a strap is you could just chain up the amount of length you want and then go ahead and go back through and do one row of single crochet, turn your work, do another row of single crochet, and then do one last row of slip stitch. That's another great alternative if you find the Romanian cord too difficult. If you just try it a couple of times, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. It does take a little bit in the beginning, but then you will quickly pick up on it and it'll become a lot easier, but it does take a minute to get used to. So just practice and you will definitely get it. So we have our slip knot and we're gonna chain up two. One, two. I make this kind of loose so I can easily work back through. And in that first stitch here, we're actually gonna work back through it. So you're gonna work through both loops of that top stitch there like that. And then pull through and complete a single crochet. This whole strap is just single crochets. So we've completed a single crochet and now we're gonna turn it so this point right here is facing us. So just turn it a little bit like that. And now you can see this part of the stitch. We're gonna put our hook through this, this loop right here. That's where our next stitch is gonna go into. Keep this loose, guys, so you can easily work through these stitches. So you're through that stitch, yarn over, pull through like that, yarn over, complete a single crochet. There's one stitch and take your work, turn it towards you again. So you again are seeing this, but now you're seeing two, which is beautiful. That's exactly what you wanna see. And we're gonna work through both of these this time. So we're through both now. Yarn over, pull through two loops. All right, yarn over, pull through. And you can kind of see it here a little bit. Turn your work again. We see the two loops again. And we're gonna repeat. This whole Romanian cord is just a repeat of this. And it's important, especially my tight tension people like me, use a loose tension. That is also why I size up for a Romanian cord because my tension is so tight. Sometimes I'll just have a really hard time getting through the stitch. So again, we've turned it to face us. We're going through both loops. We're pulling through and we're completing a single crochet. All right, turn again. Through both lo loops, yarn over, pull through, single crochet. Turn, through both, yarn over, pull through, single crochet. Turn your work. So this is what you're going to complete for your entire strap. Okay, you're just repeating this, repeating this. And when you're all finished, when you are at the length that you want your strap to be at, you'll complete that single crochet and then you'll just chain one and cut your yarn. Leave yourself a nice little tail because that's what we're gonna be sewing onto our bag with. Also leave yourself a nice tail when we started. And that's what we're gonna be sewing our bag with. If you have to start this over a couple times, that's completely normal. I had to the first couple times I made it. But go ahead and make that and then we'll attach it to our bag. So the strap is all done and literally to measure it, I just measure it out. I hold it at one end, make sure the other end reaches to 41 for me. For you, like I said, personally, do whatever you prefer for that, but I just like 41. So I have both of my tails here and I'm gonna grab my bag again. So the end of our strap to our bag so I'm gonna take my darning needle. I really don't have a rhyme or reason for how I attach my bag strap and my bag together, but I will just kind of place it towards the edge here. 
and I'll just insert my darning needle there, pull it through. You can use this other end at the end to kind of secure a knot if you feel you need the extra support. But yeah, just sometimes I also like will push it through the, the cord there even, and then I'll pull it back through. Really just in whichever way makes makes the most sense for me. And then when I feel pretty pleased with that, I will just put the bag on its side. And I'm just going to push my end all the way down through the bag here. Just kind of makes me feel better about everything. Don't want any tails popping out. And there you go, it's through. If you're working on stuff down here that you don't end up sewing those two pieces together. So there we go, we've got one side securely attached and we just have to do the other side. I do go ahead and like make sure the cord is totally straight because when you're working it, it will get quite twisted up. Yeah, you can see all those twists I have and I like them to lay flat like that. I just think that looks better. One more thing to note when you are sewing on your strap, make sure it is secure, but don't do an overkill because we are going to have to run our sewing machine over these ends. So you don't want to go too crazy, but do make sure it's secure. You only have to really weave them in a couple times and it will be totally secure on there. Don't worry too much. But again, yeah, don't go, don't overdo it and go through this section 1 million times because your poor sewing machine's gonna have a little bit of difficulty getting over that. So go ahead and attach this other side and then we'll come back because we're gonna start the liner. So now we're gonna get into the liner portion. For this bag, I'm going to be using this liner here. Grab your piece of fabric laid out in front of you. Make sure you have two layers of fabric down because we need two sides for a bag. For this particular piece of fabric I have, I do have a side here where it is folded already. So I'm actually gonna work off of this side and use this as my bottom piece. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll just have to sew an extra line across there. I'm just going to save myself a little bit of a little bit of hassle by using this as my bottom. This is going to be for the bottom and we have our two sides and then we'll have to cut for the top as well. So I'm just gonna line it up over in this corner here. I personally do not need much seam allowance because I've done this a multitude of times now, but if you're new to this or you don't sew too often, do make sure you leave yourself maybe a half inch on both sides seam allowance. So maybe you would do something like that on both sides and then you would cut, you know, a half inch over here and then up top we'll do last. So hold on one second with that, but leave enough seam allowance for yourself. I'm just going to cut it here. For the top, I'm going to leave a little bit more because I want enough to fold over so that we don't have any raw edges coming out of the bag. You don't want any of those because you are going to get nasty fraying. So we're going to make sure we roll it over and have a nice edge on our bag. So give yourself maybe an inch or so there if you can. Your fabric allows it. You guys will have to give me a little bit of grace with my cutting because I have the tripod directly in front of my face in order to get this angle. And so it's really hard for me to work and see at the same time. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go heat up my iron. I'm gonna iron all of these creases out and then I will flip my fabric so that both wrong sides are out and the right sides are both inside because this is our, gonna be our inside of our bag that we see. And this is going to be the outside of the liner. I'm gonna fold this over about a half inch or so and I'm going to iron these flaps down. This will just make it a lot easier for myself when I'm 
actually sewing in the liner piece. And again, this is just to keep the raw edges away from the top. We want a nice edge here. We don't want a raw edge where it's going to eventually fray and come undone and we'll have a mess on our hands. So I'm gonna go iron all this down and then I will be back in one second to show you what that will look like. So before we go sew this down, you can see I have it facing correctly. Both the wrong sides are outward. I ironed down this little area here. And then also, I just like to use these little clips just to help me stay in place a little bit. And over here, inside, I will be attaching, if you've watched my videos before, you know I have these little custom tags. I just got them off Etsy. They are super cute. They add a little something else. I just use a clip to hold it down. So just sew along this edge here. If your bottom piece is open, sew along this edge and sew back up. Try to stay within your seam allowance as much as you possibly can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect though, guys. This is gonna be inside the bag. No one's gonna see your stitching out here. Just try your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trust me, mine is not always perfect, not even kinda close. So just do your best and I'll meet you back here after you sew. Okay, friends, we're in the home stretch. So I just showed you, I sewed this entire piece together. So you can see the inside looks like that, the outside, it's just like a little pouch now. So now all we have to do is grab our bag and we're going to sew this right on the sewing machine together. I'm sure some of you are like worried if your sewing machine can take it. I just have a regular needle in here now, no specialty needle by any means. And I have a Singer Heavy Duty, I think it's um, like a 4420 or something. Also a little tip, I actually do when I'm ironing my fabric down, I iron both sides of the bag as well. Yeah, I just go over it really fast and it just really helps flatten everything down. Kind of like put the fuzzies at bay that you can get from acrylic yarn. So give that a shot. Again, it just really helps flatten the bag down and make it all perfect and whatnot. And so I love doing that. So now what we're gonna do is take our liner and with it face up like this. So the opening is facing upwards. We can just stuff our bag and I literally just stuffed the whole thing in there almost and then I'll just pull it up to work it around a little bit but it should be a good fit in there nice and snug and then if you have pins you can pin it of course these clips have really changed the sewing game for me it really does make it so much easier and I also usually match them to the colors in my project but that's that's just something ridiculous that I do you don't need to do that part but I do absolutely love using the clips. I feel like they also just stay so much better. So it's gonna look like that. If you need to place them in the corners here, you can totally do so. It's not going to probably fit working, like starting at a corner space. You'll probably have to start somewhere maybe in the middle to far side of the bag. And then you can go through and then Every now and then, it's kind of funky because sometimes I'll have to really push it through in the corner, but sometimes it goes through perfectly easy. So if it gets a little jammed and stuck, just put, I mean, be careful. Be careful with your sewing machine. I don't want anyone breaking their machines, but I promise you mine mine does get through. So yeah, I just will go along now with the, with the sewing machine and follow my spot and then we'll be all done. We just have to snip our ends and we're, we're all finished. All right, let's do that really quick. There you have it guys, that is our granny square bag all complete and done. I am seriously obsessed with this flower groovy liner for this bag considering the colors I went with. If you ended up making one of these, definitely drop in the comments below what color scheme you went with or let me know what you think about this color combination. I don't think it's coming up on camera right now because it's so bright. Definitely let me know what you guys think about these types of videos if you are interested in this becoming a series. And yeah, I just appreciate having you guys here so much. Thank you if you stuck around to this point. Definitely like this video if you found it helpful and you liked it. It helps me out a bunch when you guys like the video. Subscribe and thank you so much for letting me take up a little bit of your time here on the internet today. I'll be seeing you in my next one. Bye!